Welcome to GearWire with Crosstalk, episode 34. I'm here with Drew Craig. What's up, everybody? And Mr. Chubbs, Britton Weatherall. Or Britton Chubbs Weatherall. I'm not sure if that's right or not. I don't know. I, my, my, my nicknames kind of like change on a daily basis because of all this. I'm just the skinny guy with the smart-ass comments. All right. So the skinny, smart-ass guy. That's what we're going to call you from now on. Um, <laughs> we are going to look at gear announcements for the week. We are going to look at home studios and all sorts of setups. But first... Let's talk to Mr. Drew over here about your home studio setup. What do you do, Drew? Basically, I'm a, do a producer for LoungeFidelity.com. We're an independent record label out of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, I'm also a performer, professional jazz guitar player, uh, guitar teacher, uh, instructor. I basically do ev anything and everything that is music. I'm totally in love with music and uh, focused on devoting my life to it. Um, so I'm here to share the wealth and information. That's admirable and awesome. Now you do the home studio segments on GearWire, obviously. That's, that's correct. Check them out. It's the home studio workshop. I basically walk through my home studio for everybody, show the gear that I've been using, how to use it, how to plug it in, how to make it sound good, <laughs> etc. You know, everything that is home studio production. Basically, the, the premise is recording on a low budget. So that's something we're all pretty used to. And there's some baking that goes on too, right? Yeah, a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit of baking the uh, pedals there. Yeah, baking guitar pedals. Awesome. Well, Britton, over to you. Who are you? What have you done with your past? What are you doing with your life? And uh, what kind of gear do you use? All right. Well, um, it kind of goes as uh, I went to school for audio engineering at one of the major schools. I do not want to promote. So, <laughs> um, And then I went to work for some uh, larger uh, studios in L.A., um, as a runner and various other things, did a lot of freelance work between then with various other producers. You know, I produced uh, a couple, many different sorts of music, uh, you know, and I also play my own stuff, um, which has ranged from different projects and continually work on, on that evolution. But that's a, it's a different story. All right, fantastic. My name's Bill Holland. I'm sort of the uh, host slash moderator slash Barbara Walters wannabe here on the program. <laughs> And uh, I, my experience comes from sound design. I was, I've played piano forever, but I got into sound design when I was in college. And I sound designed for theater, uh, Honda. I worked sound for various concerts like Luda, Chris, <laughs> and Sugar Ray. And now I'm a professional electro DJ and producer in Chicago. But I also obviously am a video producer for GearWire.com, as you may have seen me on here. So we all have a wide range of talents. We've got Mr. Jazz Guitarist, recorder over here. We have Britton. Who does what he does? Skinny guy. He he specializes in comments. being metal. That is what he does. <laughs> he is metal, <laughs> and uh, and I'm the nerdy techno guy. So there we go. Okay, so now I'm mainly an electronic producer, but obviously I bring guitarists, bassists, or um, saxophonists whenever I please to record things. But let's talk a little bit about everybody else's setup, guys. Basically, I run a DAW that is focused on, uh, we got the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 26 sound card, and I really enjoy it. sounds great. Which DAW? Uh, we just, we have, uh, we use Steinberg Nuendo, uh, Ableton Live, and Reason, and we run it out of an HP uh, computer, which is kind of crappy, but you know, it's actually worked pretty well for us for the price. Awesome. Um, on top of that, we basically have three separate recording rooms in our studio. Uh, small, medium, and large. One's completely dead, one's a little bit more live, and one is absolutely huge. Um, so we try and uh, incorporate a lot of live elements to digital recording, and also more like electronic elements, you know, like uh, soft synthesizers and stuff like that. So it's a nice little mix of, you know, uh, sampled sounds and live sounds that we're able to create in our studio. Awesome. That's and of course, of you do the home studio videos on GearWire. Absolutely. So check those out if you're interested in uh, more setups like that, um, you know, as far as con con combining digital and um, live elements. Great. Britton? Honest, yeah. Honestly, as far as home studio stuff, is, uh, it's very simple for me. You've got a bucket and a string and a mop. No, I, I mean, I, okay. use, <laughs> I utilize, I, I have, a, I'm, I'm of the opinion and how I started out doing studio stuff was that you go to bigger places for when you actually need to record and that's where I I, I mean like I'm 
I have utilized some of the better equipment on uh, in the world nice. and have been fortunate for that, you know, and trained on that. I know how to work on that stuff, such as SSL and like Neve and, you know, used API stuff and, you know, all from using in other studios. And I, that's kind of where I come from. I come from, an, a, a, in my opinion, a dying breed of, of engineer where it's less about their home studio setup and more about where they work because I'm not going to fit an SSL in my room. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> That's you true. You could, but you wouldn't have a bed. Yeah. <laughs> just like sleep I under ha- it. I wouldn't have a house. Um, it would just be an SSL. <laughs> you give a tent. I mean, that'd be, Somehow that'd be I think cool. you'd Wouldn't make that studio. work. But, you know, like I, I use my, <laughs> I, look, my home setup is, is extremely simple because the fact is, is that it's used to create scratch tracks. It's just ideas. Mm-hmm. It's a sketch pad. So I use an inbox from back in the day um, with Pro Tools. Uh, reason and i also uh, use ableton i'm more using ableton right now than pro tools because i'm i got an old computer well it's pretty flexible too honestly i mean i've started doing i i was trying to stay away from doing recording with ableton for a while and now i've started using it and i really can't like going back to sonar is harder and harder <laughs> because it's just like why don't i just do it in ableton it's all there <laughs> well i mean just uh, the, the ability to i mean like as far as critique is concerned like i love using pro tools as long as it's like a tdm setup and we're, we're really trying to get the most out of sound but like as far as like wow i need to create something and i need to do it fast right um i mean i'm probably still a little faster on pro tools but ableton's close seconds like oh i'm just going to record this guitar part that i have this idea for and then i'm going to lay then you can just drag and drop an effect there you don't have to set it up you just like drag it in turn a couple of knobs and you've got a good approximate approximation of what you're looking for and then you can really tweak that when you go into a studio to mm-hmm. work on it sure. yeah but you have that idea already down so you don't have to sit there going oh well what do i do and you're mm-hmm. out wasting dollars yeah i also have a couple quarter inch tape machines that i have uh, i use nice. for other stuff nice. and I, I mean, I, I've invested money into my guitar rig, which is cool. all vintage stuff. So, I mean, Sweet. well, that's key to getting your sound anyway. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're recording with at that point. You're going mm-hmm. for more what you actually want your sound to sound like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a firm believer of pre-production as far as that stuff is concerned, is that you want to do everything you can to alleviate costs. Because I, you know, if I'm going to go record, I'm going to record at somebody else's place. I mean, I'm either going to have to spend money or there, somebody else is going to have to spend money to do that job because I don't have it's I live in, we live in Chicago I don't have the space no. or the money or the funds to invest in a, in a decent sized home studio that would serve my application so I'd rather just you know rent time out excellent well I'm Bill Holland I'm a uh, professional DJ from Chicago although I've, I started as a sound designer I've worked on uh, bigger live boards you know I've done sound all over the city and outside the city but I'm also a uh, electronic producer, and I'm in the band The Image Front, which is like an industrial electro, what my lead singer describes as ultra glam band. But I guess I'm the head engineer for that technically. But I've worked on all sorts of systems at home. I originally started doing more hardware. I have uh, you know actual quarter inch tape recorder like you do. I have um, an Elisa's QS88 because I'm actually a piano player. I have uh, turntables and then I mainly am software. I'm using Sonar 6 with um, Ableton, Reason, and Complete 4. And then I'm also using a Korg K25 controller with, I just picked up the Behringer that actually, believe it or not, in Daft Punk's Pyramid, despite all the Moogs and the different rack mounts they have, everything is controlled with a Behringer controller. It's about yay big. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, I think it's like BSR2000 or something like that. Wow. But it's stable. It's solid. And so I'm using that to control everything right now. And you can really... Wow. Behringer actually made something that's not a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> they make one product. And evidently, it's used by Daft Punk. One product that's used by Daft Punk. Out of so, you know, if you're making French house, you might want to pick that up. <laughs> yeah, man. That's... Uh... <laughs> because I know how much you love French house. Dude. I'm insulting you now, aren't I? No, man. Daft Punk was <laughs> awesome. So was uh, Just- Justice is pretty cool. Justice is awesome. They had like, what, 20 Marshall stacks on their uh, stage? Yeah, I mean, like, they're not as good as Daft Punk, but Daft Punk kind of is like, if you listen to all the source material, they've, they're they just a remix group, essentially. Oh, yeah, they just don't say that. Yeah. So, I mean, cool. all that intents and purposes. <laughs> well, we're going to be back with a little bit more with some updates on what's going on this week and uh, a little bit of information that Bryn wants to share with us about USB guitars and how much he loves them. <laughs> Just like I love getting a grenade stuck down my pants. <laughs> I'm Bill Holland. This has been Crosstalk on GearWire.com. <laughs>